Hey guys, we're well today. So in today's video, I'll be talking about the British and Irish Lions versus Japan. Of course, this is the first game of the 2021 Lions Tour, so it should be very interesting to watch. I mean, you know, this game is actually being played within Scotland in Murray Field, so it's one of those where it's, you could say the Lions actually have home advantage. I mean, I think the last time I actually had home advantage was what, in 2003, I believe, against Argentina? So it's going to be very interesting to see if that, you know, has a factor in who actually wins this game. But of course, you know, Japan, on the other hand, you know, they, they, they actually had a warm-up game, I believe, against the Sunwolves very recently. Of course, they won that 32 points to 17. But if you look at the halftime score, of course, they were actually behind by 14 points to uh, 3. So, yeah, they had definitely a, a few uh, things to sort out there. But, of course, a good thing to get kind of the rust off and obviously uh, bring their A game up in this uh, game against the uh, British and Irish Lions. So, I mean, yeah, the Lions, on the other hand, you know, there are a few players who kind of might want to... You know, some revenge, you could say, against the Japanese, of course, from that 2019 World Cup. You know, especially the Irish and Scot Scotland players, obviously, with Japan beating them within bo uh, both of them within the group stages. So we'll see what, you know, if there's a bit of more uh, X factor there from those players, worth the wait and see. But yeah, other than that, it should be a very interesting game to watch. Of course, here are the lines for both sides. You know, I'll run the bar with you guys, and yeah, I'll tell you what I think about them. And of course, I will give my prediction right afterwards. And definitely comment below, you guys. Uh, can I just want to see your comments uh, and tell me what you think about the whole match in general and who you guys think will win. Yeah, anyway, with the uh, British and Irish lines, you know, with that number one spot, they have gone with Roy Sunderland. So pretty, I say pretty standard selection there. He's probably he's done very well for Scotland, so not really surprised to see him in that in that spot. Of course, they've gone with Ken Owens at number two. So again, brilliant for Wales from the whole competition. And yeah, it's one of those where I just think he was outstanding for Wales, probably the informed hooker, I'd say, within the Six Nations. So yeah, not really surprised at that selection as well for the Lions. The, obviously, the one with uh, Tad Furlong. Normally, I'd say it's, uh, it's, I'm not going to say it's an unsurprising selection because in my opinion, I think he's still the best, you know, you could say prop in that position by, by a long shot. I think he's the best tight head prop still, in my opinion. But it's one of those where Obviously, there was a five person who was supposed to be in that slot, but of course he had a he had something he had a problem with his back, I believe. Like a so yeah, it's one of those where he had to obviously be unfortunately uh, uh, miss out on this game. But I mean, Furlong is a great backup option to have. So yeah, that's not really a loss really for the uh, Lions in that one. Yeah, pretty uh, overall pretty good front row I'd say for the uh, Lions there. Of course, with the locks they, they do have the likes of Ian Henderson as well as Alan Jones, of course the captain. And yeah, that's a pretty good accommodation with Ian Henderson giving you that. Yeah, both of them <laughs> extremely tall. But also, Ewan Jones just giving you a lot of experience in that position. And yeah, Ian Henderson, of course, was one of those where he just, I thought he did very well for the Irish within that Six Nations camp. And to be, I'm not really surprised he actually got selected because it's one of those where he just was probably the best lock, in my opinion. So yeah, that should be a very interesting combination to see how that works with Alan Jones. But obviously, with our loose forward, the loose forward pack, the uh, loose forward trio, they have gone with the likes of Tad Burnley at six. They have gone with the likes of Justin Tipper at seven, and of course Jack Conan at eight. So yeah, they've gone with a, a few Irish players to say the least within that front row, of you know front you could say the forward pack is to say the least. But it's one of those where within that particularly that loose forward trio, I mean yeah, Tad Burnley, I, I really like him in that sixth position, and I think that's probably where they, they should utilize him the most because he's brilliant with the breakdown. So yeah, that's kind of the area which I would put him in. And of course, you do have the likes of Tipperick as well, who's also brilliant to the breakdown. So yeah, the Jap yeah Japan will definitely have to watch out for those two because yeah, you, you just don't want to get that. You don't want to let you know allow them to actually you know <laughs> put their <laughs> put their hands within the breakdown because most of the time they'll win penalties for the Lions, of course. But yeah, I mean obviously Tipperick was actually uh, not supposed to be actually in the squad originally. Um, I believe it was Hamish Watson, but again, unfortunately he was another player who had to uh, be you know. Cut loose today from this uh, from this starting lineup due to I believe a concussion protocol. So HIA of course. So yeah, for that reason he's not available for you know the start. So that was an unfortunate one. But yeah, I mean with Jack Conan as well, I I really think this is a good shot for him. I I believe this is probably the best opportunity to you know prove his point in you know to see if he's actually going to make the starting lineup. Of course against the uh, spring box later on. He, in my opinion, it's between him and probably a foul tower, you could say, for maybe for the number eight spot, and of course Sam Simmons, but it's one of those where, of course, you know, I'll get into that later, you know, with, I mean, most, I'll, I'll get into now, actually, you know, obviously, you can see from the squad up here, you know, of, sorry, from here, it's one of those where, yeah, they haven't selected any English players, and obviously, let's not have a huge, I mean, I think everyone's had the debate already, but I think we kind of know that obviously extra, you know, extra players are coming back now, even, you know, with the Saracens as well, so it's one of those where, it's understandable why they haven't selected any English players. So, um, if you want to put it in the comments and tell me why there's another reason, then tell me. Yeah, tell me. I'm uh, definitely curious to see why there's another reason. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's the first game, and it's everyone like uh, Warren Gatlin said, he's giving everyone a chance to prove himself before that. Uh, you know, before the uh, free test series against the Springboks. So it's one of those which everyone will have an opportunity to play. So it's one of those which I just I don't think everyone has to be too worried about within the first game because obviously it's the <laughs> it's the first game of the tour. So there's a lot more games obviously for the 
English players to say the least to be uh, selected in. Yeah, you know, obviously with that um, back row, you do the likes of you know Connor Murray at nine as well as Dan Baker at ten. So a pretty good combination there, I'd say, for the Lions. Yeah, standard in that sense. I think both of them were brilliant within that Six Nations. So yeah, hopefully they can carry on their form from that into this game. I mean, with their centre pairing, they have come with the likes of Brindy Aki as well as Robbie Hensall. So again, another Irish pairing. So. Very interesting to see that he's gone a lot of Irish players from this um, game. You know, I think, yeah, obviously the Irish <laughs> probably have the most players from this um, squad at the moment, but it's one of those which is just, yeah, what are you going to do, really? I mean, they, I guess, like you said before, you want to give everyone a chance, and yeah, Rudy Aki is a, it's a weird one, but at the same time, obviously, with his chemistry with Henshaw, it's not surprising in that sense. Yeah, anyway, moving on to the ringers, of course, you do the likes of uh, Duane van der Merwe at 11, uh, who's done brilliantly, I said, the sale for Scotland within that position. So, yeah, it should be very interesting to see how he does. And, of course, in that 14 spot, you do the likes of Josh Adams. So, yeah, again, another speedster who can definitely um, get past the uh, Japanese, um, yeah, just with another kick in the air. And, you know, he's very good with, um, you know, his aerial ability as well. So, we'll see if that comes into intuition. intuition. But, yeah, obviously, with the last part, you do the likes of Liam Williams at that 15 spot. So, yeah. I always say this with Liam Williams, he's so reliable in the sense where he always, he always gives you at least a 7 out of 10 performance. And yeah, he's very good at obviously in uh, kicking as well as um, catching balls up in the air. So yeah, should be pretty standard for everyone from this game for sure. You know, what, that's kind of it with the, uh, the Lions squad. If I, uh, if I go into the Japanese, the Japan squad, for of course, you do the likes of Inaki as well as that number one, for that number one spot. He was brilliant for Japan, the sale least from that Rugby World Cup. And yeah, hopefully he can just continue his form. I've seen a bit of him within uh, obviously the uh, Japanese top leagues, and he's just yeah, he's done pretty well within that one as well. So yeah, he's just a, he's a great player to watch. You know, he always he's a, he's very good in offloading the ball. That's what I've noticed uh, within a lot of his uh, games. So yeah, hopefully he can just kind of bring that a game, kind of like a Fijian play where you know he kind of puts it around. But yeah, he's a great player to watch, and always a fun fun guy to yeah see on the field. But yeah, obviously you do the likes of Sake, who, um, so sorry, not Sake, but um, Sakate, uh, about two spots, who of course is actually not the number one hooker, of course, with uh, Jorge normally been that, um, been there for that Rugby World Cup, but of course he is, you know, I'd say, you could say the second choice hooker in my opinion, so it'll be good to see how he does within this game. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, they do the likes of uh, Jin Wong Kun at that free position. Personally, um, I haven't seen a lot of him, so we'll see how he does within this game, but uh, yeah, I think he, I mean, if he can if he can go again and see the likes of Roy Sullivan, it'll be a good combination to see who wins that battle there for sure. But yeah, obviously with the Lord Perrin, they do the likes of you know Vanderbilt uh, as well as Moore, so pretty good combination there to say the least. You could you could say they're a lot smaller, <laughs> maybe just just a teensy bit smaller than obviously uh, Alan Jones as well as um, Ian Henderson, but they are pretty good in actually winning um, you know winning actually lineups. That's something that I've noticed from the both of them. So. Hopefully they can bring their A game up in this game, but it should be very challenging, of course, against the uh, Lions uh, looks. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens there. But yeah, with the loose forwards, you know, they have gone with the likes of uh, Michael Lynch, of course, who's the captain, and Lavianchi uh, as well as that seven spot. So he's a pretty good player. And of course, uh, Mafi at that eight spot. So yeah, pr again, very good loose forwards here there. I mean, particularly I've been impressed, obviously, by uh, Mafi. I think he's the one who really stood out to me, I'd say, within that Rugby World Cup. And yeah. Hopefully he can, he can bring his A game. Of course, you do the likes of uh, Kazuki Hameno off the bench, who of course has been playing brilliantly for the Hollanders. So it's one of those which I hope he gets introduced into this game because he can definitely make an impact for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, Levianchi, uh, Levi he's also done very brilliantly for the uh, for, his, for Japan. So it's one of those which I I can see why they would select him over uh, Hameno at this point in time. But yeah, I mean, you know, of course, uh, Michael Lynch, I mean, he's just a captain and leader off, off and on the field. So yeah, hopefully he can just bring his A game within this game. So if we go to the backs, of course, for Japan, you do the likes of, you know, um, Shingeno as well as Tomorrow. so a pretty good combination there, I'd say the least for the Japanese. I mean, Tomorrow has been brilliantly, um, you know, he's, he's been in you know, that Jap Japanese squad for a very long time, I think, what, over 10 years now? I mean, I might be wrong with that, but, yeah, he's done very well for Japan, and of course, he's probably his biggest uh, high for them was obviously that last World Cup, but, yeah, he was brilliant, he was very good with his cooking, so, yeah, hopefully he can just kind of bring that, you know, translate that form within uh, this game. Yeah, uh, with the centre brand, you know, they again they've gone with you know two other guys who obviously played with the Rugby World Cup at the likes of you know Nakamura as well as Lafiali. So again, a pretty good combination to say the least. I was very impressed by Lafiali. I mean, he was, in my opinion, I think he was probably their second best back. I'd say for that Rugby World Cup. Obviously, there's in my opinion, I think was um, I'll get into, actually I'll get into it later, but it's one of those where. It's like, I mean, I'll say that. Fuck a world cup. I mean, the the left winger, um, obviously he's not involved in this squad, but he was probably my favorite player, I'd say, for Japan within the back line. But, like, but I think Lafayette, he was just so good within that center spot. So, yeah, hopefully he can just bring his A game within this one because it's one of those, but he's very good in you know, breaking tackles as well as kind of offloading the ball. So, 
Yeah, we'll see what he does with in that spot. But yeah, with the winners, of course, like I said before, Fakaroka is no longer from the Japanese squad, so you do the likes of feet. Uh, for Fiata, who's done very well this at least. No, he's a young winger, but he's obviously been within that Japanese squad, and yeah, he can definitely bring his A game for sure. I mean, he's one of those which he's he he doesn't have the same skill set as Fakuoka, but at the same time, it's something different to what um they Japan normally have. So it should be interesting to see how he does from that position. But of course, you do the likes of Nat Natsushima at that 14 spot, who again was just sensational within the Rugby World Cup. I mean, he was just great to watch, and of course, he's kind of translated that form within. The, uh, the French uh, top 14, so yeah, he's done very well in that sense, but yeah, we'll see what the, what he does within this game, because obviously it's one of those which, um, yeah, they just have to get the ball to him, and obviously he can just uh, work his magic, but yeah, obviously with the last position they have, going with the likes of uh, Yamanaka, so yeah, I mean, he's very experienced in the sense, so yeah, he'll, he'll definitely be able to like control the back line for sure, and kind of uh, um, help with that uh, territory uh, kicking, but other than that, should be a pretty interesting game for, for the Japanese squad to at least, but yeah, that's kind of it with the, uh, both lineups. If I had to actually say who wins this game, I think I'd have to edge it towards the Lions, but it's one of those which I don't think... Like, I, I think I've seen like odds, which it, it's like I said, like, the Lions are predicted to win this game by at least 18 points or over. But I personally think it'll be a bit lower than that. I think it'll be by at least, I'd say, 12 points, uh, to be frank. I, I still think the Lions will win this, but it's one of those where I just think it's not going to be as huge of a... You know, Bigger margin as most people think. I, I, I might be wrong. Uh, tell me in the comments of obviously what you guys think the your yeah you know, the what you guys think the score line will be. But I think if I had to say who actually wins this game, I think the Lions will win by twelve points, and I think the game will be at least I'd say it, it could be close. But I'm gonna say mm, yeah, I'll say twenty eight points to sixteen. Yeah, I'll say 28 points to 16 is my final mission for that game. And of course, that's towards the Lions. Yeah, anyway, I just uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. Definitely want to see you guys subscribing. Click that subscribe button below. Other than that, yeah, just uh, talk to you guys soon.